An airship is a buoyant vehicle, much as a submarine is a buoyant vehicle in the sea, an airship is a buoyant vehicle in the air, the ocean of the air. Airship Ventures has brought Zeppelin airships to the United States for the first time since the 1930s. Our most unique point, aside from the fact that we're operating a Zeppelin, which is in itself unique, is that we are the only commercial passenger airship operation in the United States. An airship is a lighter than air craft that can be steered. So a hot air balloon is lighter than air, but you can't steer it. Then you have the common term blimp, which I think most people would apply to any airship, but most properly it applies to a non-rigid airship. A Zeppelin is kind of a special case. There's kind of the common use term, which is an airship that has a rigid frame, and this qualifies on that basis. But this airship also qualifies because it was literally made by the Zeppelin company. Inside of the envelope, there are aluminum longerons running from bow to stern. It forms a triangular structure running the length of the airship, and then you have a multi-layer fabric envelope that is then drawn over that rigid frame. We all refer to it as a she, and I guess that comes more from like British maritime traditions. And she has a name, and her name is Eureka. That name came for a number of reasons, one of which is that Archimedes was said to have said Eureka when he discovered the principle of buoyancy. So one of the biggest surprises that our passengers usually have is right at takeoff because we take off vertically. That's very unique to our airship. So we just lift off and it's like you're being elevated straight up in the air. Flying in the Zeppelin is quite a bit different than flying in other types of aircraft. We say it's a lot more like uh, being on a boat. It feels a lot more similar to that than actually being an airplane or helicopter. to go up to 10,000 feet, although we never go that high. <laughs> we'll go higher if we need to go over mountain passes, but normally we're about 1,000 to 1,500 feet above the ground. The airship contains a lifting gas, in our case helium, which is less dense than the atmosphere. So imagine, if you will, like a bubble floating in water up. The bubble is less dense than the, the liquid, the water, and it rises. There's an amount of lift that is provided by helium, the lifting gas, but then there's an also an amount of lift generated by the thrust of the engines. And then furthermore, when the ship is cruising, there is an amount of dynamic lift that is generated by the airship moving through the air. The earliest airships uh, up until maybe the, the 1920s, almost all airships used hydrogen as their lifting gas. And uh, there are a number of advantages to hydrogen. It, it actually provides about 10% more lift than using helium. You can create it easily, uh, either through a chemical process or through electrolysis. But it does have the disadvantage that when mixed with oxygen, it is flammable. Helium in, in any sort of appreciable quantity for a long time was almost exclusively found within the United States. Since World War II, a number of other deposits have been found. Helium is uh, most often found co-located with uh, petroleum products like natural gas. controls the pitch and the yaw of the airship. All of the controls in the middle here are our engine controls. So we have the very unique capability of swiveling our entire propeller in its gondola. Up here you see levers that control the pressure of the envelope. That's the big balloon portion of the airship. And the uh, pressure up there changes because the helium expands and contracts as we climb or descend. So that allows us to maintain pr the constant pressure in the envelope. A 
it's such a rich and varied business to be in. There's the historic side. Zeppelin goes back to 1908, so over 100 years of history. Then, of course, there's the science of it. It's the most advanced airship that you can buy commercially today. And then there's that experiential side where when people take a flight and you see the expressions as they come off and that you have just introduced them to something that is hard to put into words. So you can latch on to all three of these things and, and it's extremely rewarding.